Indian inflation in the month of July has accelerated to a near 8%. And not just that, even the industrial production in June is crawling at 3.4%, much lower than expectations of 5.7% growth. Sonal Varma, the India economist at Nomura Financial Advisory Securities, now joins in to detail the macro impact. Hi, Sonal. Um, good morning. You believe that both the IIP as well as the CPI is a one-off. What makes you say that? Good morning. Uh, actually, the leading indicators on the industrial production side are continuing to improve. Um, and, uh, you know, what has caused the disappointment on the IP front uh, is really a 23% contraction in consumer durables. Uh, and the details, uh, you know, suggest that there's been a 71% drop in telephone instruments and a drop in gem and jewelry production. Uh, there's no reason to believe that uh, actually demand for consumer discretionary is slowing down. Uh, and given what leading indicators are suggesting, I think, you know, we've seen monthly IP data being very volatile. Uh, on a 3 MMA basis, uh, momentum is still uh, picking up and leading indicators are pointing to a pickup uh, in the next six to eight months as well. So uh, broadly expecting industrial recovery to continue notwithstanding this number. And CPI, of course, uh, you know, the big uh, jump has been in vegetable prices, uh, which were up 17% month on month. Um, but the CPI numbers broadly actually were in line with our expectations. We weren't really surprised by the CPI reading. I think the point is that the veggie prices have been very volatile, both on the upside and the downside. It's uh, not really a broad-based increase in CPI inflation that we've seen this month. Uh, therefore, uh, our view that both the, I mean, you know, the uh, just purely the uh, top reading uh, of IP and CPI would suggest that growth is starting to slow and inflation is starting to pick up. And uh, that is not our message. Uh, you know, data can be extremely volatile. I think from a medium term perspective, perspective, the trend is still towards higher growth and lower inflation, and we see both the data essentially as a one-off in that uh, medium-term trajectory. Okay, that's uh, that's good to hear, Sonal. Hi, good morning. Uh, you know, because yesterday when this data came out, especially the CPI data, uh, there were some fears that the RBI would actually go ahead and perhaps hike rates in the near future. Uh, do you think those fears are unwarranted? At this stage, uh, you know, I mean, our view is that RBI is on a prolonged pause, so neither are we looking for a cut nor a hike. Uh, like I said, uh, the increase in CPI reading uh, was primarily because of vegetable prices. Uh, excluding vegetable, CPI inflation uh, is essentially around 7.3, uh, 7.4 percent. We actually construct a trimmed mean measure of CPI, essentially removing the very volatile CPI categories and the underlying CPI trend in our view is around 7.3 or 7.4 percent. Uh, so I think if that is the underlying trajectory uh, then that should not be too much of a concern. What was a bit of a surprise actually was not the 8 percent CPI reading. We were expecting 8.1 uh, but the upward revision in the June core CPI numbers. So the June core CPI reading was revised up from 7.2 to 7.5 percent. So I think the surprise was uh, that the pace of disinflation we are seeing in core inflation wasn't as steep as what one had assumed post the June reading. Now, the point is, you know, if you look at three months back, core CPI was running at 8%. So, core CPI has also fallen from 8 to 7.5%. So it's not that directionally core CPI is picking up, but the pace of moderation is not as fast as what one had assumed. I think that was the uh, main disappointment with the CPI uh, reading. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, fundamentally the drivers of inflation from a medium term perspective are things like government policies on minimum support prices, the direction of rural wages, and most of these factors are moving in the right direction. Of course, you know, on a month on month basis you can have volatility because of base effect, because of vegetable prices, but I think the underlying trend in our view is still one of gradual disinflation. Uh, so, uh, not too concerned about the CPI reading. Just one thing I would uh, sort of highlight is that there tends to be some spillover from food prices to core CPI. Uh, so, that is something to watch out for in the next uh, couple of months. There could be some spillover into core CPI uh, in the next couple of months because of the uh, vegetable price increase. 
So now do stay on. We just need to address the news in Bhushan Steel. This is a CNBC TV18 exclusive where we understand from sources that a bank consortium will meet on the 18th of August with respect to the Bhushan Steel case. Sapna Das has all these exclusive details. Hi Sapna, good morning. Morning. Uh, basically, uh, a call has to be taken on uh, the existing exposure of bank consortium. The lead banker is PNB. Uh, around 35,000 crores of exposure. So a call has to be taken on that front. The issue right now is that if uh, Bhushan Steel, I mean, basically there none of the loans have turned sticky as of now. But since it's a criminal case, um, uh, uh, so uh, in order to address the issue of the current exposure, further fundraising is required. Now, how does how how do the banks go around doing that? Because the matter is a criminal case now. So that is one big uh, aspect uh, that is running the banks. Uh, August 18 is the meeting. Uh, they will be taking a call on the course of action. There has been a lot of talk about taking over the management of Bushan Steel. Uh, that could be one of the options, but the more important right now is what is to be done about the current exposures of around 35,000 crores, how to save that, uh, uh, you know, what are the other mechanisms of fund, fund infusion for Bushan Steel, and also ordering a forensic audit. Uh, on the loans that have been given so far. So on these three elements, uh, the bank consortium will meet on August 18th. There is no doubt that the government, including the Ministry of Finance, is closely monitoring the developments of Bhushan Steel. The issue here is that in case uh, the loans, uh, the existing loans do turn sticky, uh, you know, how do you declare the company as a visible defaulter? Because then again, it's a vicious cycle. You lose money and uh, uh, then the whole matter goes into litigation. There's high possibility of that, as has happened in the KSA case. So this is a, you know, kind of a, not a very good situation. A call will be taken on August 18, and after that, the government will also take a, a decision as to how to move about it. That's as far as Bhushan Steel is concerned. Coming back to uh, KSA, uh, this is a well-known uh, uh, well directive that has been issued by the government. Basically, the fact that um, SBI and PNB, uh, sometime back, they already issued notices to declare KSA's willful defaulter. That process has already got initiated. Uh, banks have also approached SEBI, very important that um, KSA should not be allowed to, uh, you know, raise uh, money from any other source, uh, including selling any of its assets. So that's more of a fake company. Uh, the other element, of course, is that the Kolkata High Court today might decide on the first notice that was issued by UBI to KSA declaring it as a willful defaulter. So in case... Um, uh, uh, some kind of a decision is taken on that front that the entire process on KSA will, is expected to move faster. Sonia? Okay, Sapna, thanks so much for giving us all those details. We'll come back to you. So as of now, most of these uh, loans that banks have given to Bhushan Steel have are still classified as standard loans, so there's no sticky issue over there. But since it is a criminal case, uh, there will be a meeting that will be held. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go back to Sapna when we get more details. But Bhushan Steel, remember, has fallen almost 60% in this month alone uh, since the start of the month. So that's the kind of damage that we've seen. But we've kept Sonal Verma of Nomura waiting by for a bit. Uh, Sonal, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, you were telling us about, you know, your CPI trajectory, etc. But What's the expectation from the on the GDP front later this month? We were speaking to your colleague Samiran uh, yesterday, and he said that he expects a six percent GDP growth. Um, what what's your estimate? I think based on the IP numbers we've got for April June, uh, our tracking estimate uh, for GDP uh, for the April June quarter is around uh, five point three percent. Uh, so uh, that's the number that we are expecting. I mean, on the industrial side, actually growth has been much stronger than expected, and that essentially has added around 60 basis points uh, to our, uh, uh, you know, original forecast of growth. But around 5.3 is what we are expecting right now. So then one last question on uh, inflation yet again. It's quite likely that food inflation will be high in August as well. So does that mean that CPI in August will also be tracking around an 8% mark? And is there any threat to RBI's targeted inflation level of 8% for next year under threat? Yes, next month's reading uh, also looks like it's going to be around July's level because at least in the first 11 days of August, uh, the uh, average vegetable prices in August <coughs> have been above the July level. So we would expect uh, the August CPI reading and probably also the core CPI reading to broadly remain around last month's uh, level. So no big drop uh, uh, we are expecting uh, for next month unless next 15 days prices really crash. And as far as the uh, Jan 15, 8% uh, target is concerned, um, you know, if the upside is being caused 
primarily by vegetable prices, then vegetable prices can also come down very sharply in the winter months. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, one should not extrapolate uh, from the readings that we are seeing currently. Uh, and uh, therefore, based on uh, the current uh, run rate on core inflation and our view that uh, vegetable prices will drop during the winter months, uh, we are still very much on track to uh, meet uh, the 8% target by Jan 15. All right, Sonal, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your views.